All right, good evening. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy in Chief David Reimer. Casual wear because it is a Saturday night. It is a Saturday night special. We're going to be talking about the chance for some of the folks in Texas to get a bit of rain over the next couple of days as we see some tropical mischief try to get going in the Gulf of Mexico. But before you get all excited and think, hey, there's going to be a hurricane, it's going to rain and be 75 degrees with five inches of rain. I'm afraid that's not going to be the case. If you were in California or parts of Arizona, Nevada, yeah, but we're not in California, Arizona, and Nevada, thankfully. So let's just pop on over. Here is the latest tropical weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, except it's the National Hurricane Center. See, I'm so used to doing severe weather videos this year. National Hurricane Center, this is an outlook depicting the probability that an area of surface low pressure located over the Florida Keys this evening manages to become a tropical depression or a tropical storm before it makes landfall somewhere on the lower middle Texas coast or maybe northern Mexico if it takes a southern track before Wednesday. So, what does that mean? Well, let's pop on over and take a look at this. This is a different look. This is the European weather model ensemble. About 50 different runs of the same weather model initialized under slightly different parameters. And if all those were to come together and support a similar solution, higher confidence in the forecast. Likewise, if they all looked completely different, lower confidence in a forecast. Well, about 70% of those ensembles... So about 70% of those 50 weather models run under slightly different initiation parameters develop a tropical depression before this area of low pressure makes landfall sometime probably Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon in either northern Mexico or the lower middle Texas coast. You can see here this particular model set is favoring the northern Mexico, lower Texas coast, Rio Grande Valley solution. Uh, in terms of what that means for us, well, let me be abundantly clear. I don't think this is going to be a hurricane. Uh, if it really wants to overachieve itself, it could probably become a named tropical storm, and that's probably the high end of what we're looking at. In all likelihood, this is either going to be a unnamed tropical thing or a tropical depression when it makes landfall Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon on either the northern Mexico coast the lower or middle Texas coast. This is not going to be a big wind maker. This is not going to be a big storm surge maker. Uh, probably not a big tornado maker. It can't rule out one or two weak tornadoes or water spouts moving on shore. And this is not going to be a tropical system that stalls across one area for days on end, dropping 40 inches of rain. This thing's going to be moving. And so we're not even looking at all that much rain, to be frank with you. In terms of forecast rain totals over the next several days, here's the latest from the Weather Prediction Center, keeping in mind the potential that this could become a tropical spinny, spinny, doom, doom, in name only, really. Uh, as you can see, we don't have any of the bright, red, scary colors of doom. Uh, you'd be shocked to know this was in association with a tropical cyclone, maybe. Uh, maybe two inches of rain. In South Texas, if you get lucky, some folks may get a little more than that across South Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, the Rio Grande Valley, maybe the coastal bend right on the coast. Otherwise, you can see here, there's not even going to be a lick of rain pretty much north of Interstate 10, uh, meaning places like the Panhandle, West Texas, the Big Country, Texoma, North Texas, Central Texas, most of the Hill Country, the Brazos Valley, the Arklatex, East Texas, the Golden Triangle, most of Southeast Texas, you're not going to see a darn thing from this. It's going to be hot and a hot dog, and you're going to be asking, what are we listening to this fool talk about a tropical storm for? That's a fair assumption, because unfortunately, given the very strong area of high pressure aloft, uh, this thing is not going to be making much northward progress. And as you can see, uh, rain chances are going to be confined to the Rio Grande Valley, the Rio Grande Plains, the coastal bend, the middle Texas coast, maybe a bit of the Victoria Crossroads, through the Edwards Plateau, southern hill country, southwest Texas, into the Big Bend region, far west Texas, the Guadalupe Mounds, the Davis Mounds, the higher and lower elevations, into far west Texas, the borderland. And for most folks, you can see here, we're not even talking about more than an inch of rain. And by the time you get north of Interstate 10, you're going to be lucky to get a quarter inch of rain. So, unfortunately, this is, let me tell you what this isn't. It's not a drought buster. It's not a flood maker. 
It's not a storm surge maker. It's not a big time wind maker. It's not a tornado outbreak maker. It's not going to alleviate our heat wave. It's not going to really do much except bring some rain and clouds for a day or two. Uh, in terms of temperatures, I mean, here you go. Uh, high temperatures. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do this. I forgot to show you. I made a fancy graphic and I forgot to show you. I'm very disappointed in myself. Hold on. I got to find the fancy video. Do, 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 Here, click on this real quick. And this will kind of give you a timeline progression, you know, all that. Here's what the American model, the global forecast system shows. You can see moves on shore Tuesday. Did I say Wednesday? I meant Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, really, it doesn't matter. It's going to rain. Uh, Tuesday into Wednesday, some rain in close proximity to where this moves on shore. And then that whole area of low pressure moves into southwest Texas, northern Mexico, and then back into portions of southwest Texas and the borderland come on by probably Wednesday and Thursday, if this is right. Some other data has been a bit slower. But in all likelihood, this is going to be a Tuesday to Wednesday landfall and then make it into portions of West Texas on Wednesday. And for those of you on TikTok who I forgot to unmute this for, what I'm going to do is I'll just do this whole video again here in a minute once we're done with the other stream. So I'll do it again twice. But again, here's what we're looking at for Tuesday into Wednesday. Low pressure, whether it becomes a tropical depression or a tropical storm, it's going to make it farther west. It's going to breed some rain chances. And again, this is what the rain forecast looks like with this system. Not a whole lot for a tropical system. In terms of temperatures, I mean, here's Tuesday's forecast high temperatures. You can see that where the highest chance for rain is going to be on Tuesday, we're going to have temperatures in the 80s and 90s. That's along the immediate coast, South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. The rest of the state, it's still going to be, you're not going to see a difference. I mean, there might be a bit of upper level clouds, but you're not going to see a difference whatsoever. Here's Wednesday. Now, we do see a difference on Wednesday across the Berlin, far southwest Texas, high temperatures, 80s, low 90s. The rest of the state, including portions of East Texas, we're going to see sinking air behind this system. Temperatures are going to be well above 100 degrees. It's actually going to be hotter. And then here's Thursday. What tropical system? So this isn't going to do a thing for most of us heat wave wise. In terms of fire weather conditions, wildfire danger, here's the fire danger on Tuesday. Now, yes, we do have improvement here for Tuesday across South Texas, the coastal bend, the Rio Grande Plains, the Rio Grande Valley, where we're going to have those clouds and rain chances, low to moderate fire danger. The rest of the state, high to very high to locally extreme. And frankly, we're going to have to watch for any sort of minor wind increase that may be associated with just winds away from this area of low pressure. And I'm not talking like big wind. I'm talking like maybe 15, 20 mile an hour wind gusts. Because given the drought conditions, the triple digit temperatures, well, unfortunately, we're seeing some pretty unpleasant fire behavior occur. And those slightly higher winds definitely have the potential to cause problems. So again, going back to this graphic, you can see chance of this system becoming a tropical depression with max winds of maybe wing us at 30 to 40 miles an hour, about 50 to 60 percent. If it by chance becomes an overachiever and is able to become a minor tropical storm, wind gusts maybe 40 to 45 miles an hour in some of the showers. Yeah, we've seen higher wind gusts out of most storms this summer, back when we had storms during the summer. So again, this is not going to be a hurricane. The chance of that is very, very low. I don't think this is going to be a big storm surge issue, a big damaging wind issue, a big tornado issue, a big flooding issue. Well, we're going to have a day or two of rain chances and cloud cover across parts of South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley, the Rio Grande Plains, the Edwards Plateau, the Coastal Bend. And then as we get into Wednesday and to Thursday across Southwest Texas, the Big Bend, Guadalupe Davis Mountains, higher and lower elevations, and the far west Texas in the borderland. And again, rain chances, here you go. We're going to be lucky to see two inches of rain out of the heaviest totals from this system between Monday and Wednesday. With most folks along and south of Interstate 10, let's just say Victoria to San Antonio to Fort Stockton, south, that's where the highest rain chances are going to be. Now, 
Could there be shifts? Yes. If this thing shifts a bit north, so will the rain chances. But it is entirely possible this thing actually shifts a little further south, and we get even less rain than we're showing here. So while, yes, we could have a little bit of tropical mischief visiting parts of Texas early next week, it is not going to be that big of a deal, unfortunately. And we need the rain, trust me. We all need the rain. This is not going to be a system that sits itself around and tries to drop 20, 30 inches of rain. This ain't no Allison, Harvey, etc. This is going to be skadoodling along, dropping maybe one to two inches of rain for some lucky folks in South Texas, the coastal bend into the Rio Grande Plains, which is not going to be enough to cause widespread flooding. Maybe some nuisance street flooding, but uh, besides that... Uh, we're probably just going to see the humidity become more atrocious later in the week because this upper level heat dome, it's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, we're looking at at least another two weeks of this absurdity and that's going to bring us into September. So that is going to be it for your little tropical weather update. That's all for me to say in the many moods of Spock. Not much is going to happen. Some folks are going to get rain for a day or two, but... It's not going to be enough to even put a dent in any sort of drought conditions that have developed. And even if it did, it's going to be 100 degrees by Thursday. So we just start drying soils out again. So that's going to be it for your tropical weather update this evening. We'll have a video out tomorrow morning detailing the latest forecast. And maybe we can bring some good news with that. But unfortunately, otherwise, over the next week, excluding the lucky few who are going to see some rain chances, we're going to see... More triple-digit temperatures, that's not going to stop in the next 10 days. More wildfire danger, because outside of these rain chances we just talked about, we're not going to see a drop of rain for the next two weeks, probably, in the state of Texas. And that's going to bring us to September. Could there be another tropical spinny-spinny doom-doom that tries to come visit? Maybe, but at this point, we're just going to have to wait and see. The Atlantic sure is getting busy in a hurry, but for now, none of that is going to be an issue for us, except this little weak, pathetic excuse of a tropical storm thingy trying to come visit. And again, we're not even going to get that much rain out of it, unfortunately. So we'll have to keep an eye out on the wind conditions to the north of the storm and away from any precipitation, just because if we see any gustier winds, that's going to elevate the wildfire danger any more, or more than it already is. Kind of like we saw back during September 2011, although this will not be that kind of a situation in terms of 45 mile an hour winds, thankfully. But Still, fire's fire, and we must keep an eye on it. All right, that's going to be it for this evening. As always, you can download the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app and get these forecasts sent straight to your phone. Get your local weather forecast down to your neighborhood so you can figure out just how hot it's going to be the next 10 days and how hot your electric bill is going to be. <laughs> Sarcasm. Interactive weather radars for when it actually does rain again. At this point, they're more useful in tracking wildfire smoke plumes. And, of course, storm chasing videos from that magical time during the spring where we had clouds in the sky dropping precipitation. But, hey, who knows? Maybe in four months we'll be chasing blizzards because snow. Until then, this is your sarcastic baldy in chief saying good night, stay cool, have a good one.